There are few players in the history of Osu that stand out as much as Mirami. He's a player who, if mentioned a few months ago, would have been passed off as a very good speed player, but nothing exceptional or groundbreaking. But now, it's a very different story. He has the ability of three mod maps that are so insanely difficult that no other player has passed them. And even without his skill on 3mod, he would still be by far the fastest player ever. How did he go from average to exceptional in such a short period of time? This is the story of Murami. Let's start in December of 2015, when Murami, going by the name of Zeltal, uploaded his first play to YouTube. Funnily enough, called How to Stream Stamina, where he's having trouble streaming 180 BPM, and he even fails at the end of the map. It's also interesting to note that at the time, his goal seemed to be getting stamina on more normal BPMs. But this would pretty quickly change, since as his uploads continued, his goals changed and became much more concrete. He wanted speed and stamina. He played a lot of maps with high BPM streams and single taps, like Freedom Dive and Euphoria, and by 2017, he had improved a lot. He even got a pass in the Euphoria jumps with Hidden Hard Rock, and although very inaccurate, his streaming abilities had also improved greatly. He was still almost certainly not a top player, but he'd outlined specific goals, and so, he'd improved a lot. As the months went on, he started to focus pretty much exclusively on speed, and also fast and uncomfortable aim, and the results showed. As 2017 went on, he played a lot with his laser focus on speed throughout the year, and by 2018, he'd made exceptional progress. He was still getting his top plays on aim-focused maps, but his most impressive plays were those on fast streaming maps, like his FC on end time with hidden double time. This play was also pretty special because it was on the same map set that he struggled to even pass with Nomad two years earlier. He was already becoming one of the best DT stream players, most notably with this FC getting the number two spot on the map. But even though everything seemed to be going great, after this play he started playing online a lot less. He had 2,000 plays during August when the play was set, but by the time November rolled around, he hit an all-time low of 194 plays during the entire month. At this point, you wouldn't be blamed for thinking that he might have just stepped away from the game altogether, especially since his high PP plays stopped. But his comeback would tell a very different story. Because in February of 2019, he got an FC on DMC with hidden double time. The map was worth 617 PP, which was actually pretty nuts, seeing as at the time he was around rank 1300, and this play was worth over 100 PP more than his previous top play. The play was still done on DMC though, which made it a bit less special since it already had 7 FCs with better accuracy, and it was also one of the best speed farm maps. But luckily, this wasn't where he stopped, because in March he set the best play on Golden Sun, and more interestingly, an insane DT FC on Reunion, which had the second best act on the map even though it was one of the most popular speed maps. And it made it clear just how insane his improvement was in just one year. It also highlighted his two main skill sets, of speed and fast, snappy aim. Two skill sets which he would push to their logical extreme and beyond over the next few months. In April, he snipes Destiny on an OD-10 300 BPM speed map by over 5% accuracy. This meant that by this time he'd improved his speed so much that he could stream what was generally considered one of the fastest humanly possible BPMs, not only properly, but exceptionally accurately. He was already certainly able to compete with even the best raw speed players, but you could still definitely make a case that he wasn't the best in the world, and his traditional aim was pretty lacking in comparison to even other speed players. This lack of traditional aim, combined with his actually really impressive aim on uncomfortable snappy maps, made it so that one type of map was actually really easy for him. Old stream maps, especially maps from around 2013, because they featured a lot of nearly stacked streams with some weird jumps and bursts. These maps usually only got to around 5.5 stars no mod, but they had insane death streams, which, even with the non-existent spacing, could get them well beyond 8 stars in difficulty. And although during March, Mirami had popped off, he still wasn't even in the top 500, and even most of these maps that he was especially good at were out of his skill range. And so over the next few months, he would sharpen his aim, and more importantly, his 300 BPM capability, to a pretty unprecedented level. And after about two months of 300 BPM training, it finally began to start paying off. When in June, he set an absolutely insane one slider break play on Snow Goose, which features this stream. Yeah. 
The play was worth 638 PP, even with the slider break, and it would have been over 700 for an FC. He'd also got 96% accuracy, which at first might sound pretty average, but to put in perspective just how good that is, the next best accuracy on the map with hidden double time was Amelia's 88%. Overall, this put him as probably the single best 300 BPM player in the world. The only problem now was his aim, which, while it had gotten a lot better in the past few months, was still far below top player, or even top 100 standard. But surprisingly, even with his aim, he was still able to get a few insane players like his FC on the 300 BPM dash hopes, and a 98% on Snow Goose, which had better accuracy and combo than his slider break. Overall, it seemed that instead of trying to get his aim to a top player level, he was going to continue with his previous goal of speed and speed alone, which actually worked surprisingly well, with his speed going beyond just 300 BPM and into the realm of 320 and even 330 BPM, two nearly unexplored categories of speed. And these speeds were unprecedented for a reason, because most players have trouble streaming 220 BPM for 30 plus seconds, but somehow, Marama could do better with DT. His speed was so insane that he could start getting 800 PP plays, or maybe even a 900 with just it alone. He had a few chokes here and there, like his one miss on Gabe Power, and a one miss on Snow Goose with over 99%. He had honestly already carved himself his own niche, because at this point, he had honestly gone so far beyond what even players like Zestiny had achieved on 300 BPM that he was in a league of his own. But, finally, after two months of insanity in June and July, he seemed to take a bit of a break from setting insane scores. In most players' cases, this would be seen as a bad thing, but with how much better he'd gotten after his last break, it was honestly a bit exciting. Which became justified when he came back in October. He changed his name to Murami, and then just a day later, he set the best accuracy score on the 5-star sidetrack day. This play was not only insane in general, but it also showed a progression in his play, because the map was only 282 BPM, and instead of having a super long death stream, it had some fairly difficult space streams. If he could put this new aim ability together with his unmatched 300 BPM ability, he might finally be able to get not only an 800, but also become a player who could set those kind of scores incredibly consistently. But even though he was working on this in November, he still had time to show everyone just how good he was at speed. With an FC on the 193 BPM stream practice map, Somatic Mutation, and then Resurrection Spell, and then a 95% on the Deceit. These plays made his 700s go from a freak occurrence to an almost daily thing, which is usually something exclusive to top 20 players. This was all while he was still ranked 130, and then, right after these insane speed plays, he seemed to finally start using his aim in tandem with it. With his FC on Armin's diff of Sidetrack Day, and his 2 miss on Choir Jail. But, even though these were insane, what he did almost immediately after would make them seem like a warm-up. Because he finally set the play, which seemed like the culmination of all the practice that he'd been putting into his aim, with a Kroix FC. The map was very similar to Snow Goose, which he'd had his top play on before, with one main difference. Instead of stacked death streams, Kroix had semi-space 293 BPM death streams. The play would have literally been unfathomable even just a month earlier, with the second best hidden double time score being an 86% 8-ness. He had literally ascended past where any speed player ever had. And this really could have been where he reached a skill ceiling, since the level of skill he was reaching was already unprecedented, and it seemed like at some point he would stop improving or at least slow down his rate a little bit. Which would be very, very wrong. Because not only did he not slow down his rate of improvement, but he actually seemed to go from insane improvement to a level which just seemed downright inhuman. Especially when he made the pretty unprecedented evolution in his playstyle. 3 Mod. 3 Mod had become the standard in DT jump maps in the recent months, but on speed maps, it was a bit different. Because although jump maps are hard to read on 3mod, streams are just downright impossible, because they become insane both AR-wise and also spacing-wise. The only other player who'd ever really dipped into the category was Unko, with his 3mod FC on DMC, but even he had to retry the map over a thousand times just to get the right needed, which makes the play much closer to something like an FG sky grind than a white cat sight read. And it was almost certainly something which wouldn't be replicable on a large scale. 
But even though it didn't really seem all that possible, he began to try for three mod plays in December. He started with some fairly low starting plays, like an FC on Humanoid worth 500 PP, but he pretty quickly moved up to maps which were considered nearly untouchable, like Reunion 3 mod, which he had a choke on, which beat the next best combo by 200, and had 6 less misses. And then, he almost did it. He set a 1 miss play on the map with 700 PP, which was by far the best play on it. He then 10 missed Somatic Mutation with 3 mod, which is the first pass on the map, and it was still worth 500 PP because of his insane accuracy. After only grinding for a few weeks, he'd already become able to set some of the best 3 mod stream plays ever, which should have been a sign of just how stupidly dominant he would become. He did all of these plays, and many more, in just the first two weeks of December, but in the second half of the month, he did something much more interesting. 3 mod DMC. It was a play which Unko had set after nearly a thousand attempts, and there was a reason for it, because the map was really, really hard. There are a handful of passes on it, but all of them except Unko's had under 95% accuracy and multiple misses. But even though it should have been a multiple week grind, Mirami already had one thing on his side. When he'd FC'd the map a year before, he'd put in hundreds of attempts. And so, after only a week of grinding throughout the latter half of December, he did this. He'd gotten the second ever 3 mod FC on the map, and his accuracy was just absurd. It was high enough that it got him his first 900 and his new top play. At this point, he'd gone from rank 1,300 to rank 70 in less than a year. And when 2020 started, it seemed obvious that it would be his year. In January, it was more of the same insane plays. Ascension to Heaven DT 6 miss. A choke on a 300 BPM 8.9 star stream practice map and a 9.5 star FC on an unranked map were just a few of the insane plays he set. After a while of looking at his plays, it's easy to become almost desensitized to the insanity of them, because of just how frequently he was able to pull them off. Still, most of these FCs were the first or second pass on the map, making him almost entirely in a league of his own in terms of skill. And although in February he played a bit less, he was still able to get the best DT accuracy play on the Big Black. He seemed to just keep getting better at a consistently insane and unmatchable rate. In March, he got the first ever FC on Sidetrack Day for 850 PP, and an insane zero miss run on Ascension to Heaven with DT. He only had 87% accuracy, but the play still would have been worth over 800 PP for an FC. And although everything seemed to be going well, in April, he had a surprisingly big dip in playtime. This led to many less insane scores being set during the month. It isn't really all that out of the ordinary for someone to have a month where they play a lot less than usual, but what he did after was so extraordinary that you have to think that he was once again using this time to train offline. Because when he came back, he did this.
He had set the highest PP play in the entire game with a 1 miss on a 10 star. He had just choked a 1400 PP play, and one deserving of it. The map is made up of 288 BPM bursts and long streams, which would already make it out of even most top 10 players' leagues. But it wasn't just that, because those long streams were spaced. Spacing and speed, two things which almost never go together for a reason. His play was, and still is, the only pass on the map with DT. He literally one missed a 10 star map with 98% accuracy that no one else was even able to pass. It almost still doesn't seem real that a player could have a legit 1400 PP choke. Even when Legendary came back and hacked Storyteller's DT, his FC wouldn't have been worth that much. And that play was so ridiculous it got him banned. Murami also literally perfectly aimed everything in the entire map, with even his one miss being from not tapping on time. Yeah, it's almost certainly the greatest speed play ever made, and it's arguably the best play ever. And that wasn't even where he stopped, because right after he DT'd Ascension to Heaven for 935 PP, and then, the next day, seemingly just because he could, he 3 modded it. A map which he had 6 missed, with 88% accuracy just 6 months earlier, was now 3 moddable, with only very slightly worse accuracy. And he'd pretty much won the game. The thing is, that even with all of this, it gets better. Because in the rework, speed gets nerfed much less than aim, and so, Murami will be the first player in a long time who might actually have a fighting chance against White Cat. And maybe we'll finally get to see a proper battle for the number one spot. He also recently reached the top 10 in the current system, which means that he went from number 50 to number 10 in less than 3 months. It's fair to say that Murami is in a league of his own. And we as onlookers get to watch the show as he gets further and further from what us mere mortals can achieve. He's carved himself a genre of his own because of his rather strange style and his perfect execution of it. He's ascended past what was even in the realm of possibility just a few months ago, and it's unlikely we'll ever see someone with his level of speed again. So, for now, let's just strap in and enjoy the ride. Because with his level of improvement, it really might not be long before we get to see the first 1500 PP play. And I think that's pretty exciting. 